and not super in it, but I don't. Look, I went all through this yesterday with your Mr. Pinching. Is he there? Yes, all right, I'll hang on. Mitosis by now. I beg your pardon. Never mind. Have you got the habit? You are? The monks have it. Oh, yes, here it is. Oh, right. oh this is nice. I've tried to get some curtain material like that. Where'd you get it? I don't I really don't know. It's near when I moved in. Put it on. Oh, pardon me for breathing. I don't know. You'd find me pleasant. <laughs> well, let's try it up, shall we? Mm. Right. Pretty about the rabbit, though. You're lucky I've got this in. It's usually out for vicars and tarts. Now, let's have a look. Oh, yes! Oh, this is really you. Oh, I take it back a bit of the rabbit. Very ecclesiastical. There's something not quite right. Now, what is it? Oh, come on, Percy, think. I know, it's your legs. What's the matter with my legs? They should be bare. Here, take your tails and off. Definitely not. Never mind, we'll roll them up. Look, this is absolutely necessary. I mean... It fits all right, that's the main thing. My friends will be here any minute. If a job's worth doing, it's worth doing well. I'm just a perfectionist. Mm, all right. Oh, you've got well-formed legs, haven't you? Come in. Oh, sorry, I'll uh, come back, shall I? No, don't come back. Look, get out, you. I've only done one side. Mr. Anderson. No, 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 I'm Mr. Anderson. Oh, well, they're not downstairs. They could show me round the flat, but I could come back later if you're uh, busy. No, no, it's all right. I'll just take this off. Oh, don't bother for me. I mean, whatever turns you on. Oh, the saucy mix. <laughs> yes, right. Well, thank you very much, Mr. Pinching. Oh. Will you show oh. you're satisfied? Yes, it's perfect. Well, just a minute. Don't face it, crucifix. Oh, now you'll be safe if Dracula strikes. Now, Miss... Uh... Samantha Rose. But everyone calls me Sammy. Ah, yes. Well, look, sorry about the mix-up just then. Oh, don't worry about that. I'm a big girl. I've been around a bit. I used to be a receptionist, you know, in a psychiatric clinic. There was one man there used to dress up regularly in a gym slip, pigtails and all. Have you got the key? Yes, yes, it's here, but look, I don't think you quite grasp the situation. Wearing this habit does not turn me on, as you put it. I'm merely wearing this because the rabbit outfit wasn't right. <laughs> the rabbit outfit? And what's wrong with a rabbit outfit? <laughs> Nothing, I'm sure. I just didn't happen to like it, that's all. Aha. What do you mean, aha? Uh, have you got the key? What key? Well, you know, the note down here. Yes, yes, I know what it's in. Look, here you are. All right, Tar. I won't be long. Stupid girl. Fancy her thinking that. I mean, anyone with half an eye can see that I'm, well, rugged. Pigtails, indeed. I'll soon put her right. I am not a pervert! Ah. Yes, I'm sorry about that. You see, I thought you were someone else. You see, she thought I was a pervert. 
Said she'd seen people in gym slips and pigtails. Not that I wear a gym slip, you understand. The man with his head up my habit was merely adjusting my trousers. <laughs> yes? Mr. Anderson? Yes, definitely. My name is Rose Samuels. I come about the flat. Really? How marvellous. I'm sure you'll like it. Well, I won't know unless I look at it, will I? May I have the key? Yes, yes, the key, the key. Now, what do did I do with the... Ah, someone else has it at the moment. Would you care to come in and wait? Thank you. Please sit down. Thank you. Uh, you say somebody else has the key? Uh, oh, Mr. yes. Tennant? Yes, well, I shouldn't worry about her. Quite the wrong type, I can assure you. Got a very nasty mind. Can you get you a drink? Uh, yes, a gin and tonic if you have it. Yes, coming right up. It's Mrs. Grossmeyer, that's the landlady. She's a wonderful woman. She trusts my judgment implicitly, you know, when it comes to choosing tenants. Oh, she does, does she? Uh, what did you say your name was? Richard. Oh, does she really, Richard? Yes, she does. Uh, Rose. Yes. Yes. <laughs> I understand you're hoping to move in tomorrow. Yes. Some attention from the man living next door. Oh, terrible. <laughs> Attentions are unwelcome. Richard. Really? <laughs> yeah. You know, I'm sure I've seen you some of before. Oh, that's quite possible. I only live round the corner. Ah, so you won't have far to come then? Oh, no. If I'm lucky enough to get this flat, Richard, I could move in first thing tomorrow. <laughs> I don't think there's any if about it, Rose. Is it, is it the same size as this one? Uh, yes, just about. Uh, kitchen and bathroom are through there. It's quite cosy, really. Walls are a bit thin, though. That's how we found out about the Willoughby's. The Willoughby's? Yeah, the previous tenants. Oh! Oh, what? don't move! What? I've dropped a contact lens. Don't worry, I'll find it. I've got eyes like a hawk. Mr. Anderson. Oh, there you are. I'm wrong. Oh, sorry. I've certainly had you all wrong. Now, look here. I was merely helping this young lady find something. I'll bet you were. <laughs> now, look. I brought this key back. Tell Mrs. Grossmeyer I'll wait for her call later tonight. Ta-ra, you mucky little monk, you. <laughs> <laughs> Who was that? Oh, nobody. Take the notice. Oh, ah! I oh. found it. I told you I had eyes like all. Oh, you are wonderful. May I borrow your box? Yes, yes, yes of course. Again. Just through there. Oh, lovely. As soon as you're ready, I'll... Uh, I'll Here take we you are, then. Store. Anyone home? Hello, Richard. You lot are early. Oh, nice for eating. Good to feel welcome, isn't it, lads? Mm. Oh, yeah, it's 7.30, isn't it? Now, I hope you've all got plenty of money, because I am feeling lucky tonight. The beer's gone up just because it was my turn to pay. Oh, shut up, Sid. I've got a wife and two kids to support on the money you earn, and I don't complain. More for you, old son. Sid and I are free, willing and able. Well, Sid's willing. Oh, I'm fed up with you casting aspersions on my masculinity. Ooh. No, be fair, Ray. It was that girl he took to the model air show. Oh, yeah, she was quite a laugh. Wore false nose and glasses for a joke. No, she didn't. Now, Sydney, no violence. What was her name? Beaky. No, it was Aubrey. Oh, yeah, smell of dogs and horses. You remember her, don't you, Richard? Come on, Richard, what are you hanging about for? That's it, lads. Make yourselves at home. I'm not sure how long I'm going to be. <laughs> well, isn't he the sly one? Well, it's about time. Six years divorced and only two or three girls since. Well, I think it's a cheek. After all, Friday night is their card night. Oh, oh shut, shut up, Sid. Well, I wouldn't let me mates down for a girl. Oh, what well, have you had the chance? Some of us have our minds on our things, Raymond. Ah, oh, he likes tall birds. Well, it's good to see Richard in the land of the living. Mind you, he's too nice a chap to be living on his own. But she didn't seem like his type. No, she seemed like mine. Well, I don't know you could tell. All she did was walk past. Sid, when you've had my experience, mm. that's all they have to do. Well, what can we play with just the three of us? But here then? am I expanding upon the virtues of womankind, and all you can think of is cards. That's your trouble, Sid. Some of us do have the past times, you know. Well, what did morons do before they invented model aeroplanes? Shut up, you two. I've had a bad enough day as it is. Hello, the old woman and kids have been getting up your nose and having their age on. Dorothy and the children have been a little trying, yes. Is that not what I said? Not easy making models, you know. Oh, I know it's not. She wants a new carpet, that's the trouble. Takes a lot of know-how and planning. Oh, I know it does. <laughs> the other one's perfectly all right. Mind you, they can cost a bomb. Oh. Oh, no, not really. No, start off with a bit of balsa wood, a bit of glue. What cheap, really? Kisner's ten pound a square yard. What is? A carpet, Dorothy wants. What are we talking about, Mock? Get him a place. Oh, I was talking about models. Mrs. Grossman, I'll ring you tonight then. Bye. 
Who was that then, you sly dog? Mind your own business. No, we didn't spoil anything, mate. No, I shall be seeing much more of her in the future. Oh, let's play. What was her name? You can at least tell us that. Rose. Rose what? Rose something, I don't know. Forgotten. A rose by any other name? Can we dispense with the Inquisition, do you think? I saw Mrs. Horsepool's door ajar just now, as you will doubtless be across any minute to borrow something. Oh, is that the deaf old biddy across the hall? Yeah, the eyes and ears of the world. Still, it seems to be buying the local paper. Yeah, considering she's supposed to be deaf, she doesn't miss much, does she? She can lip read at half a mile, you know. Oh, don't be so wrong. She's a nice old girl. At last we found out Sid's tasty and women. Oh, Any yeah. a good tune playing an old fiddle, eh, Sid? Don't be so disgusting. Oh, what did oh, I tell you? Here's your chance, Sid. It's Wonder Woman. Yes, Mrs. Horsfall, what can I do for oh, you? Oh, no, dear, I'm sorry to bother you. I wonder if I could borrow yes. a, a cup of sugar. Very original. Hey? Yes, of course, Mrs. Horsfall, I'll get it for you. Oh, I see you got together again, you boys. Cards, is it? No, the uh, usual Friday night old you, Mrs. Horsfall, said so, and you'll be his partner. Hey? Yes, that's right, Mrs. Horsfall. Stop messing around, Ray. How's your family, John? Trying. Yes, well, they do a lot of that when they're little, don't they? What? Crying! Can I oh, yes. Oh, thank you, oh. dear. Uh, did I see you showing someone into number four just now? Yes, you did, Mrs. Horsfall. Oh, as long as they're not like the Willoughby's. My Tibbles wouldn't go near them, you know, not after what they did. Why? Oh, what did they do? Eh? He said, what did they do? Who? The Willoughby's. They're not coming back, are they? No. Rose. Who? The girl who's moving into number four. Oh, I see. She's very pretty. I expect you boys will all be fine for her attentions. Mind you, we don't want any goings on. Well, no, you might not, but I wouldn't mind. Eh? <laughs> he said he wouldn't mind. Oh, you naughty boy, you. Just like mine will be. He always had an eye for a pretty face. That's hard to believe. <laughs> I don't know, Mrs. Horsepool. I didn't ask her. I don't think she is. At least I hope she isn't. What does she do for a living? Oh, I really don't know, Mrs. Horsepool. Now, if you don't mind, we'd like to get on with our game of cards. Oh, I love a game of cards, you know. Any time you're short, you only have to ask. Right. Thank you very much, then, Mrs. Horsepool. Goodbye. Now, if you find out any more about that girl, you will let me know, won't you? Because her downstairs never tells me nothing. Closed mouth foreigner, you see. Of course, I never did like Jerry's. Mind you, she says she never held with him. Who? Ickler. Did I ever tell you about the bleeps? No. Shut, Shut up, see. Right, thank you very much, Mrs. Horsfall. Goodbye. Pretty sick. We nearly had a blow by blow account of World War II then. But it might have been interesting. It wasn't. Not even the first time. Well, at least if he wants to know all about Richard and Gorgeous next door, we've only got to ask Mrs. Horsfall. Well, where's the crisps? Well, I don't know. Well, I bought the beer. It's gone up and all. Yes, Sid, you told us. Well, whose turn was it to buy the crisps? Oh, I've got some crisps. Just a minute. Are we ever going to play cards tonight? There. Oh, what are these? They're prawn cocktail flavour. Oh. Now, oh, why couldn't you buy salt and vinegar? We always have salt and vinegar. I thought we'd have a change this week. Oh, pretty awful, Richard. You see, I told you so. Should have got salt and vinegar. Oh, <laughs> shut up, Sid. <laughs> Not that they remind me of. What? Amanda Egerton. Amanda Egerton? You know, in accounts. Did you never kiss her? Oh, oh yeah. yeah. It was the fish paste sandwiches. She was an addict. Well, I don't know what you're all going on about. Well, you wouldn't, would you, Sid? You never take girls out. Well, if I did, I certainly wouldn't take her to Macaulay's Fish and Chip Bar for cod and chips, a bottle of lager, and a groan. A groan? A groan? <laughs> You've really offended me now, Sidney. I don't care. If I took a girl out, I'd take her somewhere really posh, like Romano's. Oh, don't mention Romano's. Dorothy's always going on that I should take her there for our wedding anniversary. Cost you an arm and a leg. I know, but it's worth it just to shut her up. What's this I hear? A little marital descent? Shut her up? Is that what you said? Well, I didn't mean it like that. Oh, well, wedding anniversary or not, you won't get me paying those prices on principle. 
I tell you, just because the waiter's got an accent and holds your chair for you, they think they can charge the earth. My sentiment's exactly old son. No, no girl will ever get me into Romano's. Come on, let's play. Mm, about time to. <laughs> oh, oh no! Shut no. up, no. no. little thing. This is gross, not her. <laughs> Hello? No, my name's Richard Anderson. There's no Peter here. Oh, Peter Rabbit. Yes, very good, Mrs. Grossmeyer. Yes, a very little joke. What's he on about? Hurry up, Richard. Shut up. You know how she goes on. Play there my ass next Friday, if you like. <laughs> Not with your mother. She cheats. Yes, they both came, Mrs. Grossmeyer. Yes, they were both English. Roll of England! Oh, I know you don't like foreigners. What did you say about my mother? Well, she cleaned us out the last time we came round York. It was just luck. Well, in my opinion, Mrs. Grossmeyer, the one that would fit him best is called Rose. Oh, it's not a big devil. No. Yes, you've got a full list of names and telephone numbers there, have you? And one of them's called Rose, is she? Well, that's the one. No, no trouble. Bye. Come on, Richard, it's your call. Right. Load of rubbish of your dumpy sin. Pass. 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 <laughs> Bandle. <laughs> That's what. All right, what's Trump's? <coughs> Spades. That's two. Uh, Richard? Yes? You've got a video, haven't you? Yes. Only you see, I've got his friend. Oh, Sidney, you have. <laughs> Who, who eyes out videos, you know, adult ones. What, you mean the uh, real thing, no holds barred? Oh, yeah, you're interested <laughs> now, aren't you? Oh, Sydney, I apologise. I always thought you were a useless little prat. But you're not useless. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> well, he says this particular one, called True Blue, is well worth the money. Hang on a minute, how much money? Well, I've worked it out. It'll cost you four pound each. Oh, that's not bad. No. It'll be a change of cards. I always lose anyway. No, but you're lucky in love, John, aren't you? Yeah, yes, yeah, that's the best. Well, well, shall I get it then? For next Friday? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's quite a bargain, really. They're normally thirty pounds, but I'm getting it for half price. Hang on a minute. <laughs> half a third is fifteen. And four times four is sixty. Well, I was only going to pay three pounds. <laughs> After all, I've got to use my petrol money to get it. You yeah, really? Have have to to Too bad, apart from a bit of a headache. Oh my god. Oh
I'll tell you bloody well why. Because some people don't knock before they come barging in when they're not wanted. That's why. I did knock. Shirt's hanging out. Oh, yes, you knocked all right. And then you came in milliseconds later, and I shall have anything hanging out I want. That's better. Now, do you think you could give me hand with my washer? What for? Well, I thought I might do some washing. Where? Well, I suppose I could do it out in the hall, but I think it'd be better in my flat next door. Your flat? Oh, yes, and I would like to thank you so much for putting in a good word for me with Mrs Grossmeyer. She told me how particular you were about me having the flat. You? You must be joking. I'd rather the Willoughby's back. The Willoughby's? Yeah. Oh, yes. Mrs Horsepaw were telling me about them. They're the ones who had the inflatable... Yes, yes, well, I don't think we need to go into that. <laughs> the point is, I did not recommend you. I specifically recommended a rather nice and... Well-dressed young lady by the name of Rose. Yeah, that's me, Sammy Rose. Oh, no, her first name was Rose. Was it? Never mind. All's well that ends well. Now, do you think you give me a hand? Well, come on, then. Count of ten, Richard. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine... That's a good boy, Richard. I'll help. Will you get out of the way, Mrs. I bet he's got a rupture. My will be at a rupture. He would never any good after that, if you know what I mean. Get on, what do you think you're doing? Don't be silly, I'm a nurse. I can easily tell if you've got a rupture. Yes, you have to sneeze into a round. <laughs> no, Mrs Horsepool, he has to cough. Get on, don't you think you've done enough harm as it is? Oh, silly boy. Men are such babies, aren't they? She's only trying to help. You want to think yourself lucky you're not married. Uh, Mrs Osborne, I think I can hear Tibbles meowing. Hadn't you better go and see if he's all right? Yeah, why don't you go and see how bloody Tibbles is? I don't worry about me. Why don't you both go? No, I feel responsible. You are responsible. Yes, you're right. I better go. Because if he gets frightened, he does things in corners. And her downstairs don't like it. Of course, they used to eat them, you know, the Jerry's. What? Cats during the war. <laughs> right, she's gone. Now let's have a look. Let's get one thing straight. You are not going to look at or examine any part of my anatomy. Is that quite clear? I've seen plenty of them before. Yes, you know. I'm sure you have. Well, you're not going to see mine. It's just a groin strain. Feels much less painful already. Well, look, do you need any massage or manipulation? Ah, <laughs> that's the sort of nurse you are, is it? French massage, Madame Fifi, I might have guessed it. It's the Willoughby's all over again. No, nothing so exciting, I'm afraid. I'm assistant to Mr. Wilson Croft, the chiropractor in the high street. Mind you, it has its moments. I caught him giving Mrs. Birkenstall some very unusual manipulation last week. I think that's why the money is so good. It's hush money. But you don't, do you? What? Hush! Oh, you haven't stopped talking since you came in here. Oh, oh. oh you are a wimp. If it's that bad, you'll just have to give up an orgy or two. I think you've got the wrong impression of me. Well, perhaps. What do you do then when you haven't got men up your frock or girls behind the sofa? I'm an accountant, actually. Ooh, flip me. I mean, what do you do this accounting for? Local firm. What sort of firm? Leisure activities. What sport? Sort of. What's the great mystery? There's no mystery. Well, who do you work for then? W.E. Willows. What? Oh, Wally Willows, the bookie. You're nothing but a bookie's clerk. No, I'm not. I'm a chartered accountant. I work for the holding company. We have 32 consumer outlets. You mean betting shops? Well, yes. Well, why don't you say what you mean, then? Anyway, I can't sit in that to you. I've got to get moved in. Thanks for helping me with the washer. I'll see you later. Oh, not if I see you first. <laughs> Gotcha this time. Clear off. Oh, right, Bridget, it's me, right? No. Hello, me old mucker. How's tricks then? Here, what are you looking for? Expecting someone. Oh, you never know around here. Leave your door open for two minutes and they're in. Oh, I thought things were much quieter now that the Willoughby's had gone. She's worse than the Willoughby's. Who is? My new neighbour. 
Here, why are you walking as if you're wearing tin knickers? Well, a groin strap. <laughs> She's responsible. Is she? Well, you certainly don't hang about, do you? Wish they'd start calling you Quickie Dicky. Oh, don't be stupid. <laughs> I, mean, I didn't encourage her. If I never saw her again, it'd be too soon. Oh, you were keen enough last night. Still, it's obvious you cannot manage a real woman. We shall have to call in the first team. I shall go and offer my services. Yes, you do that, mate. Do you still be all right with the fancy dress ball tonight? I don't know. Pity, you'll miss me in my Superman costume. Shh. Shazam! <laughs> ah, Richard, I just came to thank you for choosing the new tenant. What a lovely girl. She's only been here for an hour and all already she's given me a free massage for my bad neck. It's the pneumatics, you know. Is it any better? Well, to be truthful, no, it's much worse. But she says this is quite normal. When the initial agony bears off, it should be better than ever. You look as if you could do with a massage yourself. Have you got a new medics? No, definitely not. Don't give her any ideas, for goodness sake. She's also going to singe Mrs. Horsepool's ears for her. Silly old fool keeps telling people I eat cats. I don't know where she gets it from. also told me she's going to put in some extra power points. She said she used to be an electrician's mate, but unfortunately, the electrician died. I'm not surprised. You rotten sod, you didn't tell me you had a nutter living next door. She is a one-woman disaster. Hello, Ray, have you been pestering the new girl already, you naughty boy, you? What, me pestering? You <laughs> must be oh, joking. Boy. Do you know what she said? She said she'd hypnotise me to help me get rid of my inferiority complex. Wreck she used to work for a psychiatrist. Why have you got your thumb bandaged? I was holding the shelf and she hit it. What, your thumb? <laughs> no, the shelf. Ah, see what you mean. This shelf's fallen down. It's all the same in these old houses, isn't it? It's a plaster. It's all come away. Never mind. My uncle was a plaster. I used to help him. I'll soon fix it. How's your groin, Richard? Not too bad. And your thumb? Throbbing. Need any more manipulation yet, Mrs. G? <laughs> no, thank you, dear. Not yet. Right. Well, I'll go and make us all a nice cup of coffee. <laughs> <laughs> it's all right. I'll make it. No, you must be tired. No, I'm not me. I'm full of beans. It's all a question of mind or a matter. It's transcendentalism, you know. Oh, don't tell me you used to work for a guru as well. No, but I used to live in the same house as one at Eastbourne. It was very interesting. We used to sit around on the floor in the lotus position looking at candles. I got on the fourth plane, but he said I'd never be fully enlightened unless I shared my body with the rest of the group. Well, I didn't fancy that. I mean, there was a butcher from Coventry. So I left then and got a job in the poodle park. I'll make the coffee. Sore. <laughs> Some sore for boogieing on down at the company fancy dress ball. 
Why have you got a bit of rope round your head? It's part of my costume. <laughs> Ta-da! I'm mystified. I'll give you a clue. Clean <laughs> sleep. Oh, yes. Very good. Didn't cost very much. No, I can see that. <laughs> Come on, Mr. Oh, Universe, we're all waiting. <laughs> what about this then, eh? Should impress our own wages? Oh, how's the crutch? Saw. Never mind, old son. We'll tell you all about it in the morning. Come on, Dumbo. Have you got the tickets yet? Limbo! Oh, well, Dorothy and <coughs> John are waiting downstairs in the car. She's driving. Oh. Well, she doesn't drink, does she? Or smoke. Not much else either, I shouldn't be. <laughs> Come on, you lot. Dorothy's getting very impatient. Oh, hello, Richard. So hurry up. Well, you want to wave your cutlass at her. That'll soon show oh, her Now, come on, I've had enough trouble with her mother. Not Medusa. Yeah, she's babysitting for us. Did you warn the kids? Tell her not to look there. Oh, be by the stone. way, Richard, it's all fixed for next Friday. Oh, no, I'm all tired. Oh, oh, no. Voices. Oh, Raven, don't you look a treat. Hello, Mrs H. Come to borrow a cup of crepe tonight, then, have you? Eh? Never mind. Oh, I expect you'll be cheeky again. You're always taking advantage of me. Well, I've got to get in fast for sit here, sweeps you off your feet. Oh, Ray, stop it! Oh. <laughs> well, Sid, are you Robin? <laughs> Pardon? Well, if he's Batman, we must be Robin. Although, I don't remember Robin having a bit of rope around his head. No, on Rainbow. And I'm Rambo! Oh yes, well there's a lot of it about! Hey, <laughs> hurry up! Come on, Ambo! Rambo! Bye, Mrs. A. Bye, Cinder. Shame about the ball. Oh, fancy dress that is. Right. Oh, I do like him. He's a wag, isn't he? Can I come in for a moment? Yes, of course, sir. What can I do for you? <laughs> How's your rupture? Yeah, it's uh, not a rupture. My, he'll be at one of those, you know. They're very nasty, put paid to a lot of his pastimes, that did. Is there something you wanted? Eh? What do you want? There's no need to shout, I'm not deaf. <laughs> I just come to tell you that Tibbles is all right. No thanks to her downstairs. Here, did you tell her that I said Jerry's eight cats? No, it wasn't me. Well, somebody did. Had a right good go at me, she did. Anyway, it's nothing but the truth. And do you know what else they ate? Look, Mrs. Horsebook. Dogs! In fact, they prefer them to cats. Well, foreigners, they all eat funny things, don't they? I mean, the French eat frogs. That's why we call them froggies. Mind you, they eat snails, but we don't call them snailies, do we? And the chimps, they eat bird's nests. And as for the blacks... Uh, I understand the new girl's going to syringe your ears. Eh? Sammy, next door, she's going to syringe your ears. Yes, that's what she said. I don't know what for. Ear, she's not foreign, is she? No, I don't think so. And again, she might be. She seems to be everything else. Nice girl. Ear, your mate Ray fancies her. I recognise the looks he was giving her. My insurance man used to look at me like that. Strip me naked with his eyes, he did. <laughs> of course, I was a lot younger then. It were after my hubby's rupture. <laughs> now they're both dead. And his wife, she did his round for a bit on a bike, but she had a heart attack, and they say she was dead of all she hit the ground. Really? How fascinating. Most of the people I knew round here are dead now. I've been to 23 funerals since the royal wedding. I expect you're feeling miserable as well. I mean, you had your costume and everything ready for tonight, and now you can't go. Well... It was very good of you to pop round and cheer me up. Eh? You cheered me up. Yes, well, you've got to, haven't you? You can't let life get you down. Ah, I think I can hear Tibbles meowing. Oh, I expect he wants his supper. Ah, yes, well, <laughs> we'd better go and see to him then, hadn't you? We don't have any little presents left in corners, do we? Oh, no, not again today. Her downstairs, the Jerry, she don't like it. Cheerio! God. 
No. Now, it is good to help me, but I can't help it. I mean, I can't go without it, can I? Not when you're in the trade. I mean, I'm a professional. I'll be a laughing stock. It must be here. It must have come off when you had it. Mr. Finching, what are you talking about? Percy, remember? Look! What? <laughs> I've no bobtail. Oh. It must have dropped off when you had it. Oh, I see. Just a minute. Here, why aren't you in your monk's habit? You'll be late. I'm not going. I've got a groin straight. Oh, nasty. I was asking how you got it. Not as good as a wink as they say. <laughs> I'm going to Wally Willows. That's your firm, isn't it? I like to go to the mall. It's good for the trade, you know. Of course. My friend was supposed to be coming with me. But it's usually set everything to the last minute. Because I've told him once, I've told him a thousand times, but it's always the same. So I said to him, I'm going without you. He's no ticket and no costume. So here I am. Ah, is this it? Oh, that's it. Oh, you're an angel. I can kiss you. Uh, well, I don't think there's any need for that. Um, but look, I'll tell you what, I could probably be of further use to you. Really? In what way? Well, as I'm not going, your friend could have my ticket and costume. Oh, I couldn't. Oh, I, oh, I couldn't impose. Well, it'll only be wasted here. Well, if you insist. You know, the first time I saw you, I thought to myself, it's got a kind face. <laughs> More wonderful judge of human nature, you know. My friends all say so. Personally, say you can always spot one. <laughs> and I <they> can. <laughs> yes, well, I hope you have a nice time anyway. <laughs> oh, um, do you think I could bring my friend up from here? It would stay me going home. Yes, all right, help yourself. <laughs> Um, do you think you could pin my tail on for me? I've got a pin, look. Oh, yes, all <laughs> right. Always prepared, you see. <laughs> well, hello. You're still there, then? You're still there, sulking. Are you still sulking? Well, you can stop now, because a very kind friend has helped us out of our difficulty. Yes, I've got a ticket and a costume here for you now. No, it's not him. You always think it's him, don't you? You're becoming obsessed. He's obsessed. <laughs> you aren't. I'll tell you why he doesn't need it, because he's got a groin strength. I'm not even going to answer that. Oh, I'm getting my racks up with you. But oh! Oh! Oh, careful! You aren't. No, not you. But he's just pinning me tail on. Oh, don't say that again. You'll bring on one of my heads. Right. Well, I'll meet you outside the ballroom in half an hour. Yes. Tonight. There you are. Oh! Is it on straight? I don't want to look peculiar. <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> oh, it's all right. We just finished. I'm just off. <laughs> well, thank you, Richard. Can't call you Richard, can't I? I mean, after all we've been through. Of course, uh, there'll be no charge. <laughs> Ta-ra! Yeah. Ta-ra! <laughs> what are you sniggering at? Nothing. It's just that you seem to lead such an unusual life. What do you want? Oh, how gracious. Well, I'm sorry, but I've had a very trying day. I know you have. That's why I'm here. I've got a bottle of wine here, and I thought, as it's my fault you can't go out tonight, I'd share it with you. It's not your own brew, is it? No, of course not. Oh, all right, then. Where do you keep the glasses? They're on there. You're like this. <sighs> I buy it specially. It's Algerian claret. I think they make it out of days. Oh, Is it dry enough for you? <laughs> Ray says you've been married. Did he? But he said you're divorced now. Why just fit up? Did Ray tell you? No, it's just then he put his thumb under my hammer. Yeah. Was it sexual incompatibility? That's the usual reason. 87% of divorces are because of that. Look, don't you realise this is a very personal and painful subject? Yes. Was it adultery? Now, Olivia, must know, we just got fed up with each other. Not that it's any of your business. Oh, I expect it was because she was so boring. I expect she could no longer keep your interest. Anyway, I'm sure it wasn't your fault. 
What makes you say that? Well, I think you're fascinating. What do you mean by that? No, don't answer. Let's hear about you instead. Oh, great. I love talking about me. All right, I'll tell you anything you want to know. I don't mind how intimate it is. Right, fire away. How old are you? 27. Where were you born? Oh, it's those sorts of questions, is it? Born Bolton, 1958. I've got one brother, two parents still together. There's a surprise. Who still live in Bolton, even more surprising. I've got one nephew. I've had jobs too numerous to mention and boyfriends too boring to mention. Been in love once for sure and once possibly. No known hobbies, afflictions or diseases. Voted SDP at the last election. Oh, my grand and granddad live about two miles down the road and I go and see him every Sunday. I don't go to church, so I suppose that makes me a heathen. Don't do anything particularly well, but do most things a bit. Now ask me some interesting questions. No, I think that'll do, thank you. Don't you want to know about my loves? No, not really. Well, most blokes do. Well, I'll tell you anyway. Which do you want to know about, the cert or the possible? The cert. I knew you'd say that. His name was Gary Churchill, and I knew I was in love with him because whenever I used to see him, I used to blush and stammer and get all tongue-tied, and once I even wet myself. <laughs> But there was no future in it. He were a lot older than me. You see, you were nearly seven and I was only five. <laughs> Eventually he deserted me for Andrea Beaker because she'd got a conker tree in her garden. Took me nearly a week to get over it. Aha, uh -huh, very funny. And what about the one you're not so sure of? Oh, we don't want to talk about him. Let's have some more wine. Did I tell you about when I was a ballet dancer and they gave my mum her money back? No, come on, I want to hear about Mr. Possible. All you've told me so far are jokes. Tell me something about the real Samantha Rose. You're going all serious on the eye. You said I could ask anything I liked, didn't you? Well, yes. But you didn't really mean it, did you? No, oh, all right then. Gird your loins. Here it is. His name, well, that doesn't matter. He was handsome, sophisticated, witty, charming, good job, even better prospects, attentive, tender, loving, married. After six months, his wife became pregnant. End of story. Pathetic, isn't it? Let's have some more wine. I haven't finished this one yet. Well, hurry up, then. Do you know I used to wrestle crocodiles in the circus? You didn't. No, I didn't. Got you going, though, didn't you? You're a very unusual <laughs> person. <laughs> I'm unusual. You can talk. Oh, I'll get it. Oh, no, I know you from somewhere, don't I? Oh, I know, you was the girl behind the sofa. Richard, it's the girl you was behind the sofa with. My name is Rose Samuels. Would you mind keeping your voice down? Rose, I'm so sorry. Do come in, won't you? Would you like some wine? No, thank you. I do hope I'm not interrupting anything. No, no, of course not. I was going to ring you to explain what happened. Rose, now I know what happened. Who is this person, Richard? Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, Rose, this is Samantha Rose. Sammy to her friends. Good evening, Samantha. Poor Richard. Now I know what happened. You got the names, Mother. No, no, though. I didn't. It was Mrs. Grossmeyer. That's what I was going to explain to you. Well, I must admit I was rather puzzled when I didn't receive a phone call. After all, you did promise the flat to me, did he? Well, I... Get out of that one, Richard. And even if Mrs. Grossmeyer had made an error, I'm sure you could have corrected it this morning when uh, Samantha here arrived. Oh, no, he couldn't. You see, he wanted up. He had this hangover. No, no, I didn't, didn't have a hangover. She just moved in very early. Yes, Richard helped me, didn't you? Yes. Oh, really? Well, no. Well, I you did or you did it. He did. Shut up. We can do without your interjections, thank you. Interjections? Well, I've been some things in my time, but never an interjection. <laughs> but if that is the case, then this interjection is leaving. And I'm taking me wine with me. <laughs> what can I say, Rose? I really did recommend you for the flat, but well, Sammy's well and truly installed now, and I don't think there's much I can do about it. What can I do to make amends? Well, you could take me out to dinner. I'm rather at a loose end now. Splendid idea. Yes, you choose. Any way you like. Um, Romano's. Ah, Romano's. Yes, fine, fine. Um, that's if we can get a table this time on a Saturday night. I'll tell you what, you ring up and I'll put on a jacket and tie. Hello, Luigi, how are you? Yes, it is Rose. I wonder, any chance of a table for tonight? You have? Oh, that's more, what my usual one? Oh, that's even better. Yes, his name's Anderson. In about half an hour? Oh, that's wonderful, thank you. Any luck? Yes, I've had a cancellation. Oh, good. Well, all right then, we better go. Oh, no, 
gosh, I have to powder my nose first. Oh, yes, yeah, sorry, it's uh, just through there. Yes, I remember. Well, you've got rid of her then. I heard the door go. What a pain in the bum she was. Now we can finish our chat and the wine. Ready now? Oh, we're off to Romano's for dinner. Oh, I nearly worked there once. <laughs> Ready, Richard? Uh, yes. Right, let's go then. Oh, well, um, have a nice time then. See you tomorrow then. I'm really looking forward to this. Yes, I I If you think that, young lady, then all I can say is, you're absolutely right. <laughs> Let's have a toast. To a long and intimate relationship. Oh, Richard, I don't think you ought to drink anymore. After all, who's going to drive me home? Yes. <laughs> oh, Richard, it was lovely at Romano. Soft lights, music, dancing, and that lovely meal. It must have cost you a fortune. There's nothing, darling. I always say, if you want the best, and you've got to pay for it. And you certainly deserve the best. Oh, Richard. <laughs> What's that? Nothing. Oh, that's not nothing. What is it? It sounds like someone playing the Vicar of Bray on the recorder. Just ignore it. Ignore it? Who on earth would play a recorder at two o'clock in the morning? I think it must be Sam. The little beast. I'm just about fed up with her. Don't worry, I'll put a tape on them. We won't hear her. Oh, Rose, you're so
rain. How do things go in Blackpool? Oh, good. No, things are pretty much the same at the office. No, I haven't spoken to her since last Saturday. No, she hasn't spoken to me since last Saturday. Hey, and John's wife hasn't spoken to him since last Saturday. What on earth happened to the ball? Well, he's not saying. Oh, all right, then tell me later. Yes, we're all set up for the blue video. I haven't seen Sid so excited since they held the World Model Aeroplane Convention at Worksop. <laughs> yes, no, there's no other news. Well, apart from uh, Mrs. Horsball's other ear syringe, so you better be careful. She appears to be able to hear much better. And Tibbles has disappeared. Probably heard that her next door was once a vet's assistant. <laughs> yep, all right, then, mate, we'll see you later. Oh, and don't forget the crisps, will you? Bye. I've come to apologise. What about bursting into people's rooms? No. I should not have played my recorder last Saturday night whilst you were trying to have a romantic interlude. <laughs> well, not the Vicar of Bray, anyway. Mind you, everything sounds the same on the recorder. I should also not have put on the 1812 overture in a childish, but very successful, attempt to drown out Nat King Cole. I mean, couldn't you have found something better than Nat King Cole? I happen to be but very first fond. of all, I should not have let you take all the blame for the noise. That was unforgivable, <clears throat> so do you forgive me? Well, you don't look very apologetic to me. Oh, I am sorry. Truly, I am. But she gets right up my nose. Oh, I'm sorry. I'll bring my girlfriends round for your approval next time, shall I? Look, to prove how sincere and contrite I really am, I decided to take you out for a curry tonight. My treat. I'm a bit flushed this week because I've had some good tips. You find a beer, right? Oh, no. No, I can't. Not tonight. Why not? Um, the, the lads always come round on Fridays. Oh, well, we'll all go. It'll be a naff. No, no, they like to play cards. Oh, all right, then. Cards it is. I'm good at cards. I used to work at this club in Bradford. I've got a nifty shuffle. No, no, you can't. Why not? You just can't, Are that's you still all. cross with me? No, it's not Oh, that. I see, you just don't want my company. No! Then. I must say, I thought you'd accept an apology a little more graciously than that. It was, after all, just a joke. I thought you could take a joke better than that. Obviously, I was wrong. Oh, Sammy, wait! Oh, women. Hello, mate. Oh, hello. Well, what's the matter with you? You look as if you lost a quit and found sixpence. Nothing. Where shall I put the beer? In the kitchen. Put them in the fridge to cool off a bit. No, that's a good idea. Well, my word, we are down in the dumps, aren't we? <laughs> you should have my worries. Oh, yes. Yeah. Sorry, mate, I never did ask you why Dorothy isn't speaking to you. Oh, just don't mention it. Come on, tell me. Everybody knows but me, but well, nobody's saying anything. Not many people do know, exactly. Luckily, it happened in a corner, but I think if it had been in the middle of the floor, I should have got the sack for sure. What? Well, you must take into account that I'd had a skinful, because Dorothy was driving. It was the first time for ages and the booze went straight to my head. Yes, go on. Cyril Smee from New Projects had come dressed as a chicken. And he was bopping with his wife in the corner. She was dressed as an egg. Mind you, she didn't look very different from usual. Get on with it. Well, you know how Cyril likes a laugh. Well, somebody left his bowl of mint and vanilla ice cream on our table. So I picked it up and threw a few splodges of it on the floor underneath Cyril's tail. Of course, Cyril laughed. <laughs> so did his wife. But unfortunately, just at that moment, my wife, who was quick-stepping with the chairman, trotted it, slipped. Well, down she went and grabbed hold of W.W. as the pills. He was dressed as Fred Astaire. And the pair of them were floundering about all over the place. He finished up by falling on the ice cream and she fell on top of it. <laughs> Dorothy, the chairman? Yes, oh, Mr. Willows. Anyway, as they were struggling, he grabs hold of her sarong and rips it so that when she stood up, it fell off. <laughs> of course. Cyril, with four sheets of the wit, sees them and yells, Get them off! But of course, it didn't amuse her. In fact, she started to cry. Meanwhile, old Mr. Willows was still floundering about on the floor. So Cyril and me pulls him up, and I thought I'd got away with it because he seemed very confused and kept saying, What happened? What happened? Of course, I was trying to wipe the ice cream off his back, and I saw Cyril give me the wit, so I knew he wouldn't drop me in it. Good old Cyril. But then, unfortunately, his rotten egg of a wife says, I hope you don't think my Cyril had anything to do with that. It was him. It's hooligans like him that ruined dances. Blimey, what did Dorothy say? She just said we were going home. That's been the sum total of our communications since last Saturday. Have, have you heard Cyril it? came and apologised on Monday, but the damage was done. Have you heard anything at all from upstairs at work? No, but nobody wants to be seen talking to me. This oh. is the most I've said for a week. I shouldn't worry about it, John. It'll soon blow over. No, I'm not so sure. Hey, you remember Frank Wilson? You know, him and Courtney Tenex, you're Gloria. 
we're still on the Irish bingo account. Yes, I see what you mean. That is a fate worse than death. Nobody's ever managed to make anything balance there. Hello, Richard. Who's a mucky little chicken? Oh, just don't mention it. What? Not even knowing Blackpool. They don't. How? Well, I told them. I've had a few pints on that story this week, I can tell you. <laughs> you rum sod! It was Dorothy's face. One minute she was whizzing round the dance floor like Dorothy Lamour. The next she was bouncing up and down on old Wally Willis like a trampoline. <laughs> Afterwards he had a bit of a twinkle in his eye. But they're saying it's killed all hopes of your promotion. But I'm not so sure. You've got a filthy mind, Ray. You mean to say you think he enjoyed it? What? When she stood over him in her high heels and undies, his old eyes were gleaming. She's a big girl, your wife. I've never really noticed that before. Come in, Sid. I've got it. Well, don't come near me, because I don't want it. I see your back. Right, so, sunshine? Bet you forgot the crisps. Oh, no. Here you are, six bags as always. Oh, what are these? Vindaloo flavour, the latest thing. Oh, why didn't you get salt and vinegar? <laughs> we always have salt and vinegar. No, we don't. Last week we had prawn cocktail flavour. Good evening, Sid. Oh, hello, Richard. Well, I think we should. Aren't go you back speaking to me then? <laughs> don't know whether I or. <laughs> Made a proper fool of yourself, John, at the fancy dress. I don't know what's going to happen, but Frank Wilson in Irish accounts is looking very hopeful. <laughs> Fine, mate, you are. We've all got our careers to think of. What well, career in postal? That's a contradiction in terms. Large jokes from Little Acorns grow. Oh, it's true then. What? About your Little Acorns. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you are crude. I'll oh, get in with the porno movie under his arm. Oh, yes. Are we going to watch it now? How long is it, Sid? 27 minutes, 37 seconds. Oh, oh well, in that case, we've got oh, time for a few games of cards and only and a few beers. And well, are we only going to watch it once, then? Honestly, <laughs> honestly, Sid, anybody would think you'd never seen a blue movie before. Oh, I haven't. <laughs> well, you'll just have to keep your little acorns under control a bit longer then, won't you? Oh, I'm glad I'm not like you. You'd never survive it if you were, old son. I'll tell you, I read somewhere once that everyone has a golden period in their life. This must be mine. When it comes to the birds, I just cannot put a foot wrong. I just have to look at them, and they're all mine to do with as I will. Nah. One in Blackpool last week, Struth, she wore me out. I was glad to get back in my own bed for some kit. I should be glad to get back in my own bed too. I've been on the couch for a week. Why? Because Dorothy's had a headache since last Saturday. <laughs> oh, that could be serious. She ought to go and see a doctor. Oh, <laughs> shut up, Sid. <laughs> Now there's wives for you, John. Stay fancy free like me. It never happens. As soon as they start looking in furniture shop windows, I'm off. You'll have to settle down sooner or later. You can't keep this pace up much longer. Well, I bet that's where you and I differ, old son. You're too staid. Staid? What do you mean, staid? I don't mean it as an insult, mate. Everyone says, what a nice fella you are. And you are. But it's not a lot of fun being nice. Sammy? Oh, excuse me for bothering you, Richard, but um, I'm having trouble changing this light bulb and I thought, as Ray is so tall, perhaps he could give me a hand. Certainly, my darling. Oh, thank you so much. <laughs> See what I mean, lads? <laughs> He's no taller than I am. But anyway, she used to work for an electrician. What's she want him for? Well, I don't know how he does it. I mean, it's not even as if he's handsome. I mean, Dorothy thinks he's quite repulsive. I don't know how he does it either. He's so obvious. No finesse at all. Well, it certainly seems to work. <laughs> yes, but none of his relationships are long-lasting. I wouldn't mind any sort of relationship. <laughs> even if it didn't last very long. <laughs> I wonder what they're up to. If we put a glass against the wall, we could hear what was happening. Well, I couldn't stoop as low as that. Well, you don't have to bend down. <laughs> Do something like that. Oh, I could. <laughs> Honestly, Sid, how could you? Can you hear anything? Shh. He's laughing. I can't hear anything. Now he's laughing. Well, 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 hang on a minute. Listen. What did he say? It's what I thought he said. I wouldn't like to repeat it. Shh. He's laughing again. Gone quiet again. Yes, very quiet indeed. 
Trying to get a few pointers on how it's done then, eh, lads? Lessons from the master? Well, I'm afraid you're going to have to miss part two of this little seduction scene. I've been invited out for a curry. You? Oh. Well, I like that. She asked me first and I turned her down because you lot were coming round. As I was saying before, you're too nice. But, 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 but what about the video uh, and the cards? I don't feel like cards. And as for the video, well... I'm more of a participant than a spectator. <laughs> See you around me, I work with I think it's a bloody cheek, Ray. Now, don't blame me, because you're too slow. It's not a question of being slow, it's a question of loyalty. Yeah, here, here. What, 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 what do you say, John? Well, I mean, I see Ray's point of view. I mean, she's quite a sexy little thing, isn't she? Oh, My sentiment's oh, exactly old son. When I first met her, I thought she was a bit of a nutter. But now I think she could be a right little raver. Oh, I can assure you, she isn't. She's a very nice girl. She's not your type at all. Now, that's your opinion, Richard. I'll wait to form mine. When I turns on the old charm, I just can't go wrong. Are you ready, Richard? Come in. Bye bye, lads. <laughs> oh, what a sweet. Still, at least we can watch the video now. I don't feel like it now. I must say, I find Ray's attitude appalling. Oh, I've always said that. He's like an animal. I don't know what's the matter with you two. He's the same old Ray that we know and love. If I didn't know better, Richard, I swear you were jealous. Me? Jealous? I don't know what you mean. What are you doing? I'm just looking for something, that's all. Well, are we going to watch the video or what? Not now, Sid. Well, we might as well. It only keep going on if we don't. Yes, I will. Look, I'll put the light out and we'll turn it. We'll lock the door. We'll be able to see it then. Hold on until I've loaded into the machine. Oh, all right. What's that bit of started bar now? Well, they sometimes have long leaders on. <laughs> well, surely it should have started bar now. <laughs> yes, it should. It's not worth it. What? What? It's not worth it. What's the matter with it? It's Oh, it's no good. The little red light's not even on. Oh, this is terrible. I know. John! We could go round your house and watch it. I don't think Dorothy would appreciate that, Sid. <laughs> Us watching a mucky video instead of the three episodes of Dynasty that she's recording. Oh, this is <laughs> terrible. I've got to take it back on Monday. Look, I'll tell you what, I'll get somebody to come round in the morning and have a look at it. Then you can come and watch it tomorrow night. How's that? I suppose it'll just have to do, won't it? <laughs> oh well, we can't play cards with the three of us. I think I'll go home. Yeah, I think I'll go too. I'll get Dorothy a Chinese takeaway on the way home. See if that'll put me back into her good books. Yeah, right, sorry, lads. Sorry tonight's been such a washout. See you tomorrow. Okay, yeah, cheers, mate. Cheers. Cheers. Bye bye. <laughs> right, madam. Let's see how you like it. I wonder if I can play the Vicar of Bray. Yes, yes, but it is 
right, I haven't had my breakfast yet. It's like a miracle. I'm going to the over 60s bingo at the welfare centre this afternoon. I had to stop going because I couldn't tell the difference between legs 11 and clickety click, but I can now. I'll show them. Lovely girl she is. I'm ever so grateful to her. So don't you go upsetting her. Me? Yes, you. I saw her coming out of here last night. She did look at all happy to me. You better watch out, otherwise you'll have her boyfriend on to you. What boyfriend? The one who stayed with her last night. Ooh. He come about midnight and she let him out about half past six this morning. I could hear him talking most of the night. So you better watch it, because I don't think she's the sort of girl who'd let a fella stay the night unless it was serious. God, I might get an invite to the wedding. That'd make a change from funerals. Are you sure about this, Mrs. Horsman? I mean, I didn't hear anything. Ah, well, there you are. Our bedrooms are next to one another, aren't they? Lovely girl she is. She helped me look for Tibbles yesterday. I told her, you know, what I thought about her downstairs. But she said she didn't think Jerry's ate cats. Still, how would she know? She's too young. She didn't live through it like us. Us? I didn't live through it. I'm not old enough. Oh no, I don't suppose you are. It's funny that. I always think of you as being much older. I expect it's because you're so staid, you know, compared with the others. <laughs> anyway, I can't stand here that to you. I've got to get ready for the bingo. Kenny's eye number six on his own, 44. What does everybody mean, staid? Just because I don't behave like Ray? Wait till I get hold of him. He won't think I'm so stained when I knock his bloody block off. Have you done it? Done what? Ran the video, man. Oh, for goodness sake, Sid, I only just got up. Well, if he don't ring before 11, he won't come out. You ring. I'm going to go and have a wash. Hello, uh, I'm ringing on behalf of Richard Anderson, Flat Three, The Larches. His video's on the blick and it's imperative you come out today. Yes? Well, well can you come or not? Well, there's no need to be so rude. Well, what kind of time can we expect you then? Sometime before one. <laughs> Oh, can't you be more specific? Sometime before one, then. OK, yes, someone will be here. But... Well, don't count on me being here. I've got things to do. Well, if you're not here, he'll go away again. Quite. Why didn't we have here to watch the video? Tough. Oh, what's the matter with you this morning? I'm not feeling quite so staid, that's what. <laughs> Oh, you're just sulking about what Ray said, aren't you? You don't want to take any notice of him. I don't. Hey, I wonder how he got on with her next door. Oh, quite well, I think, considering that he came out as the milk went in this morning. He didn't. <laughs> well, I bet I know what they were up to. <laughs> That's because you've got a disgusting mind. It goes with your dirty raincoat and your porno videos. Dirty! I had it clean, especially at the fancy dress ball. Of course, it's got some ice cream on it now. But that's John's fault. Suppose I have to have it cleaned again. It costs three fifty for a match, you know. Come on, raincoat. Yes? Richard, could you do me a favour, please? Oh, yes, of course. What does Madam require now? Well, I've got to go out and I'm expecting a visitor. Mail, of course. Yes. Just the one, is it? Yes. Do I get commission? What? Do I put the red light on? Oh, but Richard, I don't know what you're talking about. I've, I've got to go out now. Will you, will you give him the key and tell him I've left him something to eat in the fridge? Oh, meals are included, are they? Included in what? Nothing, nothing. Richard, I'm really in a hurry. Will you do it or not? Well, it just so happens that I too am going out, but I'm sure Sid here will oblige. Good morning. Well, uh, yeah, yeah, well, yes, it's no trouble. Would you, Sid? I wouldn't bother you. Oh, yeah, I can't find Mrs. Gross, man. What was the matter with Richard this morning? Oh, I don't know. He's been funny ever since I got here. Oh, well, I've got to go. I've, I've got to go to the hospital. Oh, nothing serious, I hope. 
Yes, sir. I'm afraid it is. Oh. Why didn't they get salt and vinegar? I mean, we always had salt and vinegar. Is Sammy here? Uh, no. Mrs. Horsepool said she was looking for me, silly old fool. Oh, she was, but she's gone now. Why, there's Richard. Well, he's had to go out. Why are you here? Well, I'm waiting for the video, man. Well, there's Sammy now. She's had to go to the hospital. She said it was serious. My God, but she looks so healthy. This is nothing to go by, of course. My first husband, Vernon, never looked so well as on the day that he died. You understand? No. <laughs> of course, it could be nothing. Just woman's troubles. No. I thought I heard voices. Oh, my God. Did you find her? Oh, she's had to go to the hospital. Something serious, so Sid said. How do you know? No, oh, I don't. It's just what she said. Bless her. I do hope it's not going to be another funeral. Mm. It could be nothing more than a checkup. <laughs> That's what they told me. And the next thing I knew, they whipped it all out. What? Everything. Oh. The doctor said to me, Mrs. Horsepool, when I took out everything what needed taking out, what were left weren't worth needing. So I'll whip that out as well. He has lovely hands. You should see my scar. It's ever so neat. Do you want to see it? Oh, yes. Well, I don't. Oh. I won't ask him, you. Come in. Oh. Anyway, it's inconvenient. I mean, anybody's been here Saturday morning. But, um, do you think I can see Richard for the moment? Oh, yes. Where is Richard? Oh, he's gone out. Uh, but I don't think he'll be long. Would you like to wait? Well, I thought I wasn't up to get anything. Oh, I just wanted to be cool. Not at all. I mean, we're just discussing Mrs. Horsepool's oh. operation. Would you like to sit? A cup of water cover this. Oh. Um, yeah, right. Uh, no sugar for me, thank you. Uh, what about you, Mr... Oh, we're uh, pinching. Percy pinching is popular party pass down to his back hard. There's two lumps. I've had such a morning already. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Someone's birthday? Oh, no, it's uh, just a little something. Oh, peace offering for the wife. Oh, good heavens, no, I'm not married. I can I'm see not, that. Not the physical type. <laughs> My be was. What? Physical. Ever so. Before his rupture, he were never any good after that. Oh, nasty. I had something very similar when I was young. I've never ridden a bike with a crossbar since. My friend swears it was a turning point in my life. Do you believe in turning points? You know, fate, kismet, I do. Yes, I do. By only this morning, I read my tea leaves and I foresaw an illness. And you see, Sammy has had to go to hospital. In fact, I haven't seen such a mess at the bottom of my cup since the day my Vernon passed on. You should use tea bags. I always do. You can't read tea bags. But what's wrong? Has somebody been took queer? Pardon? I mean ill. Yes, Sammy, the girl who lives next door. Oh, oh my God. I was only talking to her the other day. We had such a laugh. Is it serious? So she told Sid. But there you are. In the midst of life, I was only saying to my friend the other day, enjoy it while you can, I said, you know, short life and a gay one, <laughs> if you see what I mean. <laughs> he always looks on the black side of life. My Vernon was just the same. I think all men are, especially when they get to a certain age. They say it's the male menopause. Of course, he's a lot older than me. Does he get hot flushes? Yes, he does, especially his ears. I could tell what sort of day I was going to have by the colour of his ears. Just like the seaweed. Eh? Well, if you look at your seaweed, you can tell what sort of day it's going to be. No, seaweed goes stiff or limp. Oh, see what you mean? <laughs> Mind you, you can get pills for it now. Can you? Oh, Is yes. it that spanner?
Spanish stuff. Oh, no, I don't think it's Spanish, because you get it from boots. Oh. Uh, Good Mrs Baxter's hot blushes. Did it really? Yes, but she ended up with a very large bust. Oh, oh I don't think that would do then. <laughs> it's just that he's so restless. He keeps playing with his toes. My Vernon does all of his twiddling himself. <laughs> his moustache, his hair, his beard, everything. Twiddle, twiddle, twiddle. Got on my nerves. My, will be used to make noises. What sort of noises? You know, not with his mouth. <laughs> <laughs> he used to say it was my cooking. <laughs> Don't talk to me about cooking. Do you know, the other day, I slaved over a cucumber and nut sorbet, and he just picked at it. Sent the cucumber, gave him indigestion. It's only faddiness, that's all it is. Men all over. Men are a great bird. They certainly are. Yeah, we are, then. <laughs> Tear up. I found some cake in the tin. I'm sure Richard won't mind. I don't want any, though. I've gone off it. There you are. Pardon? Oh, don't mind me. We're just having a whinge. <laughs> oh, this is lovely. It's the only thing what kept me going through the war, you know, tea. We used to have her that coffee. Roasted acorns, it was. Roasted acorns? Roasted acorns and cats? You certainly ain't so funny thing. I've told you before. We didn't eat cats. You're to stop saying that. Who ate cats? Not the Jerry's. <laughs> if you weren't such an old woman, I'd smack your silly face for you. Oh, I'd like to see you try. Come on, Jerry! Stop it, stop it, that's a crazy scout stuff. Yeah, yeah, yes, except some are more common than others. Will you to give me a turn? Then she will keep going on about me eating cake. I suppose if you're starving, you've got to eat something. <laughs> For the last time, he didn't eat cats. Will you stop going on about it? The very thought of my little treasures being eaten is enough to give me palpitations. Here, put your hand there and feel. Morning! <laughs> oh, no. Hello, see? Who's your friend? <laughs> This is Mr. Pigeon and he's waiting for Richard. I see. Hello, ladies. You're looking particularly attractive this morning, Mrs. H. Who's the lucky fella? Oh, Ray, stop it. I'm too old for that sort of thing. Now, you're only as old as you feel, so let's have a feel. Oh, Ray, stop Not it. A day over 16, I should say. Oh, you're like the cat with the cream this morning, aren't you? Oh, don't go on about cats again, please. Oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Pinchy. <laughs> Percy? Oh, sorry, Percy. <laughs> Is this private or can anyone join in? <laughs> oh, uh, sorry, Ray. It's just that Mrs. Horspool said that Mrs. Gross. M m m m I don't think we'll go into it anymore, <laughs> Who's the flowers for, Ray? Ah, you noticed. They're for your newest tenant, Mrs. G. Oh. The delectable Samantha next door. Oh, it's not like you to go spending more money on a girl than you all. No, it's not. I'll admit that. But we had a really great time last night. She's a real giggle, she is. Kept me laughing all night and bought me a curry as well. Thought the least I could do was present with a bunch of the old smellies. Did it nick them out of someone's gone? Oh, I should ignore that remark, Sydney. <laughs> well, I think it's very romantic. Well, thank you, Purse. It's nice to know there's someone who appreciates the finer things in life. <laughs> Talking of which, when I popped my head next door just now, all ready to get down on one knee and do my very best. Thank you for last night's bill. The object of my desires was not in the immediate vicinity. What's he talking about? Oh, Sammy was out when he called. Then, then why didn't he say so? No, he never uses one word when ten will do. My, my, we are cheerful this morning, aren't we? Is that a pot of tea I see before me? I can really deal with the bevy, but failing that tea will do. Oh, and a piece of Richard's cake. Oh, uh, shall I be mother? Only you can answer that one, Purse. Oh, he's saucy, isn't he? Where is Richard, anyway? He's gone out. If you think I'm in a bad mood, you should see him. <laughs> oh, you're back, then. 
disturbing him. Oh, no, no, not at all, all son. No. Nice bit of cake. You're here, are you? I see what you mean, Sydney. Sexual frustration, that's what Don't it is. Don't stop that. Oh, look, I was only joking, Richard. Oh, I think I'd better go and look for Tibbles. Mine got us at the time already. I must fly. Yes, Tempest does feud. It doesn't hit. I got your little Prezi, Richard. But you can open it when I've gone, if you like. No, no, look, sit down, everybody, and finish your tea. I just got out of bed the wrong side this morning, that's all. Mm. Glad you've come to your senses, Richard. It's not like you to be so touchy. I didn't mean you. And what are you doing eating my cake? <laughs> hey? There's some food for you next door. Wasn't that a message? Uh, well, I think so, yes. <laughs> well, give him the key, then. Oh, well, is it for him, then? Yes, I, too, find it unbelievable, Sid. The message was to let yourself in, and Sammy said she'd left you something in the fridge. Well, hey, now that's what I call service. Bear. But how does she know I'd be back so soon? Female intuition, I suppose. Close your mouth, there's a bus coming. No. Well, I must bid you all a fond adieu, and as your cake's all gone, Richard, I'll see what the little darling's rustled up for me. Well, there you are, my pretty. I was just coming round. I've got the key and the message. Oh. Mr. Wonderful, <laughs> that's me. Here, are you all right? But you're going to have such a funny colour. Oh, look at his face. It's all suffused. He's gone red and all. Ray, of course, can be a little indulgating at times. <laughs> no, no, Mrs. Grossmore. You mean infuriating. In fumigating applies to pets. So, I think for once Mrs. Grossmeyer has chosen exactly the right word. So Sammy is back then. Seems like it. I would have thought she'd have popped in and told us what happened. Yes. That's people all over. They rush to tell you the good news, but the bad they keep to themselves. Oh no, I'm just the same. I bottle everything up and it oh, yeah. festers inside me. I'm sure that's what causes my hemorrhoids. What are you all talking about? Uh, uh, if we put a glass to the wall, we could hear what was happening. We did that the other night, didn't we, Richard? Oh, oh. Say, um, is this true, Richard? Is that how you found out about the Willoughby's? I can assure you, Mrs. Grossmeyer, that one did not need to employ such methods to know what the Willoughby's were up to. You could hear them down the bottom of the street. Willoughby's? Did they have a son called Lionel? Yes, a very strange boy. Oh, you can say that again. Do you know, he wanted me to walk to Marrakesh with him, but I said I've got a veruca. Of course, his parents used to dabble in the occult, you know. Lionel once told me it was the result of a spiritual coupling. Oh, I wouldn't have thought there was anything spiritual about Lionel Willoughby. Still, I suppose it takes all sorts. Well, it wasn't my thought to a feminine by her. See, what are you doing? Come away from that wall. Oh, shh. She's crying. What? Well, she's stopping her heart out. All right, that does it. He's gone too far this time. He's been asking for this for years, and now he's bloody well going ahead. Oh, hello, Richard. Oh! <laughs> oh, oh God. God. He punched me on the nose! Oh. Oh, 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 it's no use going beyond me. It's got nothing to do with me, what you and Sammy get up to. What do you mean by that? Sammy! Oh, oh, he's got me! Stop it, Richard! I think it's only fair to hold you these hands are lethal. Now, what is it you have done, Ray? Nothing! Nothing! Oh, I'll give you nothing! Come out and fight like a man! What on earth's going on? You ain't shut up! just come out from talking to Sammy and he punched me. Where? On the landing. I didn't do anything. Oh, yes, you did. You? Oh, no, I didn't. She was crying when I got there. Ah, oh, pull the other one. Now, just don't start again, Richard. I'd like to warn you that I'm an expert in unarmed combat. I've been teaching it at the WI for 10 years. Have you really, Rose? And I'm also a black belt at judo. You're some girl, aren't you? Right, you can get up now, Ray. Stop bleeding. Uh, what about oh. poor Percy here? He's still unconscious. Oh, I expect it's just hysteria. You can sort that out. Oh, no. No. Oh. 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 I've had one of my turns. You fainted, dear. Oh. Last time that happened, I was taken advantage of. Oh, nobody here would take advantage of you. No, I 
didn't think they would. Is it safe to come back yet? Now will someone tell me what's going on? No, no, we do not It's quite obvious we never thought anything out until everyone has calmed down. I suggest we all adjourn to the pub for lunch. Ray, you can take me. Certainly, Ray. I've never seen such an exhibition in my life. <laughs> Are you all right now, dear? Well, I do still feel a bit queer. <laughs> well, here you are, Richard. It's just a little present for what you did for me and my friend the other night. Thank you, Percy. I'm sorry for what's happened. I, I just don't know what came over. Oh, oh don't apologise. I've not had so much excitement since I was rescued off Brighton Beach by lifeguard. <laughs> I must rush warm and tell my friend. <laughs> what you need, Richard, is a good dollop of syrup of figs. Clears the poisons out. <laughs> Never mind, Richard. They all get steamed up sometimes and then we have to let off. My husband <laughs> always has to let off. <laughs> He hasn't been then. <laughs> Who? The video man. <laughs> Goodbye, Sid. Well, uh, are you going to wait in for him then? Cheerio, Sid. Well, it's still on for tonight then. So long, Sid. See you later then. <laughs> I suppose you want to know what all the noise was about this morning. You want to borrow something? Looking for Ray? What do you want, then? A cuddle. What? A cuddle. What do you mean? Will you please come over here and put your arms around me and cuddle me? Oh, Sammy, please. what's the matter? Don't cry. I can't help it. Oh, I'll have to thump him again. Oh. Ray, that swine. You it, Ray? Oh, I did. He made you cry. Ray did? Yes, but he won't do it again. But look. Fancy letting him stay the night. I was very surprised at you. Ray didn't stay the night with me. Well, somebody did. This is Horseball Urgent. Oh, Richard, look, let's get things straight. You just no, sit no, down. No, no, it's all right. Me. You don't have to explain to me. I mean, what you Richard, do is your own business. Be quiet and sit down, but first I must open the door. Why? You're perfectly safe here with me, you know. Oh, Richard, will you just. I think... just want you to know. Richard! Now will you shut up? <laughs> now. For a start, Ray did not stay the night with me. He left at 11 o'clock last night. My brother arrived at midnight to tell me that my grandparents had been involved in a car crash and were in hospital. My granddad's in a coma. Sammy, I'm so sorry. Oh, let me finish. David, that's my brother, he said that he'd, he'd stay the night with me and, and there was no point in going to the hospital last night. And He went late early this morning and I would go later. You see, I left the message with Sid, with the key and the everything for me brother. Oh, see, how are they? 
Well, Grandma's only got cuts and bruises, but Granddad's in intensive care. They say the next few hours are vital, and they'd ring me and let me know one way or the other. That's why I've left the door open so I can hear the phone. Been a real bird, haven't I? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure your granddad will be all right. They can do wonders these days. Try not to worry too much. Oh, we've always been so close, you see. They virtually brought me and my brother up when we were little because Mum and Dad were abroad such a lot. Dad was in the raft, you see. And he looked so awful with all those tubes and things sticking out of him. I feel so helpless. Can I get you some coffee or, or something stronger? No, I'd just like to stay here if I can. You said course you. Uh, right here, if you do. <laughs> See ya. I thought you'd gone off me. I thought you fancied Ray. Whatever gave you that idea? Well, you asked him to go for a curry with you. Well, I asked you first, but you wouldn't come. Well, it was Sydney's blue video. Pardon? Oh, I wasn't supposed to say anything to anyone about it. You mean you turned me down for a bit of porn? Well, it wasn't like that. You see, we, we'd all arranged to come round here and watch it. Well, Sid was so excited. What, before he saw the video? <laughs> well, I only hope it were worth it. No, it wasn't. You see, it broke down. That's why Sid was here this morning. He was video sitting while I went out. Oh, well, never mind. When you get it fixed, I'll come and watch it and all. It is fixed now. But you're certainly not coming to watch it. Why not? Richard! Richard, it's a phone! What? It's a phone! Go and answer it. No, I did not You go. Just, just find out if it's good news or bad news. And if it's good news, come back smiling. <laughs> well. Is that a smile? Yes, yes, of course. Oh, thank God, I thought you might have wind. It's your brother. <laughs> it says it's good news. <laughs> Buns are beautiful. He's <laughs> all right. My brother says that when Grandad came round, he had to do put the 230 at Chepstow and could he have a bottle of brown ale? Oh, it's it. He wants to come home, but they're going to keep him in for a couple of days for observation. I'll go and see him tonight. What can I take him? Oh, I know. I'll take him his pipe. Oh, no, I don't know where it is. Have you got one? No, that's no good. Oh, I'll get him a new one. Oh, no, that's no good either. He doesn't like grapes. Grandma does. I'll take her some, though. You could take flowers. Oh, no, he don't like them. No, no, for your grandma. Oh, yes, yeah, she likes flowers. But what can I take him? Oh, never mind. I'll think of something later. Oh, get the glasses. It's time for a spot of the old Algerian claret. I've got a nice bottle of Beaujolais, if you'd rather. He's my granddad and it's my celebration, so we'll use my wine. Anyway, after a couple of glasses of this, I'm anybody's. Well, so yours, Lanfer. if you like. Oh, which you don't, Mr. Stayed. Stayed? Right. Algerian claret it is, then. And after that, my pretty, I trust you're going to come across with the goods. You're really quite disgraceful. I know. Oh, but isn't it a relief to know they're both all right? Now, where were we? Richard? What made you think I'd let Ray stay the night? Do you think I'm sex mad? No. Well, I am. <laughs> <laughs> but not for him. I mean, he's so obvious, isn't he? He's a laugh. But who's going to score for the sort of line he gives oh, you? Oh, plenty, I can assure you. Oh, that's just what he tells you. I'm not so sure. And what was all that noise about this morning? I was too upset to come round and find out, but it sounded like a fight. Well, it wasn't. Well, not a real one, anyway. Oh, I suppose I might as well tell you, you're bound to find out anyway. I punched Ray on the nose. Didn't half bleed. Well, why did you do that? Well, I heard you crying and I thought he was responsible. So you thumped him? Yes, well, I also thought that you and he and... that he and you had... I see, so you were fighting for my lost virtue. Well, <laughs> yes, Saul, and he just made me so mad. Oh, Richard, my knight in shining armour. Oh, careful, careful. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Is your groin strain still painful? Oh, no. Well, at least he wasn't, but you remember Rose? You don't mean... Yes, that's the one. What about her? She <laughs> need me in the groin. Why? To protect Ray. She was protecting Ray? Mm. I don't believe this. What else did you do? I threatened to thump Sid and Mr. Pinching. He fainted. What was Mr. Pinching doing here? No, he brought me this. 
And before you say anything, it was for giving his friend a ticket in costume for the fancy dress ball, and that was all. I never doubted you for a moment. We girls can tell these things, you know. Anyway, it all sounds fascinating, but I still don't see why you have to hit Ray. No, it does sound ridiculous now, I know, but you see, I haven't slept very well. I've been, asl- been awake half the night on the set of you with me trumpet waiting for you to come home. <laughs> what? No, yeah, I was going to play the Vicar of Bray at you and get me home back. And all this because you were jealous of Ray? I'm not jealous. Well, what was it then? It was because I was jealous of Ray. Ah, there you oh, are. Oh, right. There's no need to crow about it. Well, if you were jealous, one could logically assume that you must have had more than a passing interest yes, in me. It's all right, Miss Bloody Freud. <laughs> well, there's no need to be snotty about it. Well, I made a right burp of myself. I feel a fool. I think it's sweet. It's not every day a girl gets fought over. Richard? Mm. Can you really play the Vicar of Bray on your trumpet? Yes, I think so. <clears throat> that would have dampened Ray's ardour, wouldn't it? <laughs> dampen anyone's ardour. <laughs> I don't know what I shall say to Mrs Horsepool or Mrs Grossmeyer. I think I frightened them after death. Oh, I shouldn't think Mrs Horsepool were worried. I mean, she defeated the Third Reich on her own, didn't she? <laughs> Never mind. I'm sure they'll understand your loony behaviour when they realise it's because you're in love. Who is? You is. Yeah, I suppose I am. What about Ray, though? Did you hit him very hard? Well, he was bleeding rather a lot. Rose mopped him up. She turned out to be a real tower of strength. All administering to Ray, kicking me where it hurts and smacking Mr Pinching's face. I always thought she was a nasty piece of work. She don't... She's obviously got violent tendencies. Took Ray off to the pub for lunch. I bet he pays. Yeah, well, he did seem very meek for him. Oh, well, it'll do him good if she gets her talents into him, putting him in his... Place. Yeah, I must phone him and sit and apologise. You didn't manage to upset John as well, No, you? no, but then he's the only one that did escape. Oh, well, I'm sure they'll forgive you. Yeah, they're supposed to be coming round tonight. I'm sure Sid won't pass up the opportunity to watch the video just because I shouted at him. Hey, so I have to ring Ray. Oh, I must go. I want to go to the hospital. And I want to be back in time for the video. I told you, you're not watching. It's not the sort of thing young ladies watch. Oh, well, I should be all right then. I mean it. You'd be embarrassed. No, I wouldn't. You mean you'd be embarrassed. All right, I'd be embarrassed. And don't you dare say it's because I'm stayed. Oh, you're beautiful when you're angry. <laughs> See you later. Oh, no, look, hang on. Wait, wait while I phone Ray. Give me moral support. Oh, why don't we up then? <laughs> Hello? Hello, Ray. It's Richard. Listen, mate, I just phoned up to apologise. I don't know what came over me. You was jealous. I was jealous. Because <laughs> I know it's understandable. Big edit as ever. No hard feelings then? Ah, good, good. Um, listen, John and Sid are coming around tonight to watch the video. No, we couldn't watch it because he broke down. Is it his fix now? Oh. Oh, I see. Oh, all right then. Leave it with you. Bye. Is he coming round? Oh, she's going to Sainsbury's with Rose. <laughs> he says he doesn't know what she's got planned for the rest of the evening. Oh, how the mighty are fallen. You can say that again. No, I can't. I haven't got time. I'll see you later. find them very handy. Oh, I shall. Especially if her downstairs gets stroppy again. Have you heard anything from Ray? Fancy you hitting him. I thought you was all mates. Yes, we are. I rang him up and apologised. Oh, good. I don't like to think of you all fawning out. Who got the girl, then? Well, it appears that we both did, but I got Sammy. Oh, lovely girl she is. She changed my whole life. She did when 
she swinged out my ears. You should have seen the stuff what come out yes, of Yes, I know. You told me. So you got Sammy. Ray got Miss Bossy Boots. Yes. <laughs> He'll have his work cut out for him there. <clears throat> and um, I've met this very nice man at the bingo. Really? Yes, his name's Mr Brains. Wilfred Brains. What's he like? Clean. Yes, very clean and neat. Oh, good. Mind you, I don't want to go rushing into anything. Still, I expect he'll have his way with me in the end. <laughs> you men usually do. Isn't it exciting? Anyway, I'm off to do some training now. Here, how long do you think it'll take? What? To add four inches. Oh, some time, I should imagine. Only I'm seeing Wilfred again at the Beetle Drive on Wednesday. <laughs> Still, every little helps. All you need is love. Let's go, All you need is love. <laughs> Sid's right. Come in, Sid, old friend, old mate, old chum. Make yourself comfortable. Where did you know it was me? Just a lucky guess. Well, you're a bit different to what you were this morning, aren't you? Wanted to thump everyone this morning. I trust that's all forgotten, Sid. I have seen the error of my ways. Have a frisk. What are they? Your favourites, salt and vinegar. Oh, I quite like the prawn cocktail ones we had the other night. They sort of grew on me after a while. Yeah, but me. I still like salt and vinegar. Is it fixed? Yes, it is, Sid. You shall see your video. Have you checked it? I've got the chap to sign an affidavit. Well, there's no need to be sarcastic. We just don't want to be disappointed again, do we? No. Shall I check it? Yeah, if it'll make you happy, Sid. <laughs> oh, it seems to be working all right. It's the adverts. Right. Ah, hello, Mrs. Gresmite. How nice. Turn that off a minute, Sid. What? Turn it off. I just came to apologise for threatening you this morning. Oh, I think it's me that should be doing the apologising. Sid! Oh. <laughs> Not at all. I broke the code of honour of my karate club by raising these weapons, these that have broken bricks, in anger against you, so you must forgive me. Oh, I do. <laughs> Sammy explained to me that it was all an affair of the heart. This I understand. The Germans are a romantic people. This is not usually known. And although I am now a mature and emaciated woman, the heart of a young girl beats within my bazoo. You understand? Yes, I think so. So I am very happy for you and Sammy. I remember how silly my Vernon used to be. He used to take me out of the countryside and kiss me under the Buchenwald. Really? How interesting. <laughs> hello, everyone. Oh, hello, Mrs. Grossman. Good evening, John. Oh, I'm glad to see you remembered the beer. Yes. <laughs> Dorothy fetched it for me. Dorothy fetched the beer? Oh, yes, there have been a few changes in our house since yesterday. Why? Well, what's happened? I tipped a can of paint over her. <laughs> Deliberately. You did what? I just suddenly saw red. I mean, I just sat down to watch the television and she plonks this can of paint in front of me and said if I've got nothing better to do to watch stupid kids' programmes, I could start painting the bedroom. Well, I mean, it was Tom and Jerry. Oh, Sat so Tom and Jerry. Jerry. Well, exactly. Anyway, I just took the can and upended it over her head. She spent hours trying to get it out, but it seems to have done the trick. I master of my own house and back in my own bed again. Oh. I think at this point I shall leave. I shall see you boys again. Yes. All right then, Mrs. Grosby, I'll see you again. Bye. Bye-bye. So the worms finally turned there. Well done, mate. You've got to keep these women down, you know. Yes, it's incredible. Mind you, she's got her own way about the carpet. We should have to buy a new one now. The other one's covered in paint. <laughs> anyway, at the moment, my every wish is her command. It's great. I mean, I told her I was coming round here tonight. It was my turn to buy the beer. She volunteered to bet it for me. Oh, no. <laughs> it's long. <laughs> oh, I hate logs. Shut up, Sid. I told you, Sammy, it's men only tonight. What, Sid's here? <laughs> That's a wrong thing to say. Oh, I don't mean it, Sid. You know I think you're sweet. 
Which is more than I can say for Mr. Male showing his pig over there. Streaks and stones, you're still not watching it. It's spoiled sport. What do you think, John? Well, I'm inclined to agree with Richard on this one, Samantha. I think you should do as you're told. Right. But on your own heads be it. I think I should warn you lot that I intend to form a women's action group in this here block of flats. <laughs> so you'd better watch out. See you later, Sammy. Right, shall we watch it now then? <laughs> well, are we going to wait for Richard? Well, I don't think he'll be coming. Oh, of course, yes. You punched him on the nose, didn't you? Well, who told you? He did. Blabber mouth. <laughs> Well, I've just happened to ring him up and he came up in conversation. Oh, he couldn't wait to tell me. Well, if you must know, I rang him up and apologised, so that isn't why he's absent tonight. He's with Rose. She certainly seems to have him where she wanted. Not a ray, sure. No, he actually went to Sainsbury's with her this afternoon. Really? Well, it's true. He seems to have met his match this time. Oh, right. Uh, come on, then. Switch it on. Why are you going to sit there, then? Oh, <laughs> Sammy of all people and asking her to call round to where I am. What, Rose is next door with Sam? Yeah, I'm supposed to wait for her here. Oh, so what's going on? Uh, should I know? She wouldn't tell me. I oh, thought oh, you could make women do anything you wanted. Yeah. Yeah. Look, while we're Rose, you are oh, talking about oh, a very yeah, different kind of She's a yeah. real woman, she is. Somebody like that behind me, I could go right to the top. Well, at least oh. as far as the altar. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you may well be right. Perhaps it is time I settle down. Just remember to wear your fox at all times. Oh. If you're thinking of settling down, my advice to you is to start as you mean to continue. Put her in a place and keep her there. Oh, listen to Mr. Impact over here. Not anymore. No, either. it's taken me a long time to learn my lesson, but I don't intend to let Dorothy gain the upper hand again. I can't believe what I'm hearing. What has happened? Well, last Saturday we just sitting down to watch the video. Do we have to go through all that again? <laughs> Let's watch the video. Hey, this is lager. Yes, I'm sorry about that. I shall chastise Dorothy when I get home for getting the wrong stuff. But I'll get her trained eventually. Right, on with the feast of erotica. Poor Sydney here dies yeah. of frustration. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I hope you enjoyed uh, the show tonight. If you did, uh, perhaps you'd tell your friends. We've still got one or two seats left for tomorrow night. If you didn't, uh, we'd be grateful if you kept your mouth shut. <laughs> <laughs> um, our next production is at the Key Theatre. Uh, runs from October the 20th to the 25th and is the musical Man of La Mancha, based on the story of Don Quixote. Uh, it's very, very good and uh, I'm sure you'll enjoy it. Anyway, hope you, hope you had a pleasant evening. I uh, hope we see you again. Good night. God bless you.